will start in a minute. Can you hear me? Sorry, ah, my sounds. It's been a while since I did ano no. I'll turn up my cam in a minute no. Pero can you can you hear me? No. Denig nyo ba ako before we officially begin? Yes po. Okay, that's good. All right. Sige, hintayin lang natin yung iba, no? Okay. It's 8 o'clock, so let me turn on my camera. Hello, hello everybody. Magandang gabi po. No? Welcome to our live stream. Welcome to our online lecture about um, correlation and regression analysis. Thank you very much no, for attending this lecture. I really appreciate it sa lahat ng mga nag-share. Um, I really appreciate the help of RPM Twit people, no? particularly our GEO students. And thank you to everybody, okay, who helped in disseminating, no, na meron tayong uh, online lecture tonight. Ayan. So, good evening everybody. No, figure out ko pa kung paano ako makikita dito sa StreamYard yung ano, no. Ah, okay, okay. Nakita ko na. Ito pala yung, ah, okay. There you go. It's been, a, it's been some time since I did um, live stream on, on StreamYard. Kaya medyo naninibago pa ako. Okay. Masanay tayo sa Zoom, di ba? O sino sen- ba sa inyo yung mga naging students ko? No? Naging students ba ko ba kayo sa review? Okay. Saan kayo? Sa home base ba kayo? Or nag-meet ba tayo face-to-face? Anong branch ba <laughs> ang nare-representa ninyo? Okay. <laughs> Yan. So makita kung mga taga saan ba kayo, no? Home base, ayan. Ayan, ah, face-to-face. Kung face-to-face saan? Sa Manila. Okay. Yan. Eh nandiyan ka pala Luningning no, sa mga followers ko no. So hello hello no. <laughs> Ayan. Si Bu Branch oh hello no, mayong gabi. Face to face an yung face to face. No. Uh, hello you no nandiyan ka pala. Okay. Ayan. Ayan. Ayan, nandiyan si Gresha, no, former students ko. Salamat sa pagpunta. Ah, oh, Corona Nadal, it's been some time. No? Kailan ba ako pumunta dyan? Ano pa yun? February. <laughs> RGO Baguio. Wala akong Baguio this year. No? Pero, um, I'm happy, no? Na, I, I think magkikita-kita tayo this Saturday online. Ayan. So, you know yung pangalan mo ba in real life? Anna Forger. <laughs> okay. Dabo, yeah. Wala, wala kay Dabo this year, no? Pero, I believe, magkikita-kita tayo online, no? So, Saturday, um, I let you know ahead of time, no? Sinabi na, eh, eh, hindi ko alam, no? Alam nyo na ba? No? May dev site ako sa Saturday, no? Sa, ano, sa Booster. How do you call it? Is it Booster? I forgot ano yung term ni Ma'am May. Competency review, no? Competency review. Yeah. So, ayun. Ah, Montilupa represents. Ayan. Okay. Alright. Sige. No? Siyempre, no? Para sa inyo to, no? Okay. And marami-rami. Oh, 100, no? I didn't expect it na ganito karami ang pupunta, no? So, sa mga kararating lang, good evening everybody. And welcome to, okay, welcome to our lecture tonight. Um, let's start tayo with some sort of kamustahan because I know that it's been some time na rin since we ended with our face-to-face review. And now we are moving back to online, no? And it's so happy to be in touch with, I don't know, with, with you once again, no? For online man or face-to-face yung last, na, last time na nakita tayo. Okay, it's nice to see you again. It's nice that you're doing well. At uh, malapit ang board exam, no? Kung bibilangin niyo ang araw or hindi, it depends on your personality, whether or not you are neurotic. <laughs> okay, so nasa inyo na yan. Okay, anyways, um, sige, no? Let's begin kasi medyo marami akong ipa-cover tonight. I teach stats in school, by the way. And sa totoo lang, na iba yung gusto ko i-discuss tonight. Iba yung nasa isip ko, pero since it's been some time since I did online through, through um, StreamYard, um, gusto ko munang kapain. 
Okay, kasi baka maputol-putol ako online tapos pumangit yung outcome. Pero originally, my plan was to cover test development. Yung mga analysis kasi, karamihan sa mga students ko sa face-to-face man or, on, or home base, usually say, certainly namin naranasan yung test dev kasi nga online kami ng site assessment, sadly. Okay. Um, pero sabi ko, next time ko na lang siya gagawin. Okay, because... I'd like to test the waters first. No? Baka kasi mag, mag-epic fail yung live stream. So why not start with uh, uh, an easier you know, topic, correlation and regression? It may be easy for me, but maybe not for some. No? So I'd like to share what I know about this. And then later on, we will be moving to regression analysis. Yeah. Um, so kung nahirapan kayo sa stats, no? I hope you will learn a lot tonight. Uh, may approach to simplify. Bakit? Kasi hindi ako magaling masyado sa math. No? I'm an average student. Pero, since we use computers, okay, in stats, doon ako naging confident. Tapos, I'm proud that my approach is simplified. No? At least according to my students. So, and I hope that will also work for you. In terms of my experience, I've been teaching stats since um, 2020. Okay? Up aside from the review, the review class. And other than that, I've been a thesis mentor since 2020 rin. So, yun yung experience ko, no? I usually teach, and other than that, I also teach psych assessment. And the rationale, okay, and sa nas- ra- the rationale why I want to discuss this tonight is, um, bilang psychometrician, or if we have listeners here na non-psych students, no? pero most of your side are, are ano, no? going to take the boards for psychometrician. Bilang psychometrician, correlation should be your friend. It should, dapat friend mo siya, hindi mo siya kaaway. Tsaka dapat naiintindihan mo siya. Okay? Kaya yun yung objective natin tonight is ayun, no? to review the concepts of correlation and um, regression analysis which is very much related to correlation. At pangalawa, okay, the reason why I chose correlation kasi kapag gets mo siya, it's easier for you to understand all other topics, uh, not really all other topics, but the other topics in, in what you study. Okay? Like psych assessment particularly because in psych assessment, when you analyze reliability, validity, when you create a new test, you rely heavily on correlation analysis. So let's start with correlation analysis and then right after this, we move on to regression. So let's let's first talk about um, the basic concepts. Okay. But before that, no, did you do correlation when you were... I don't know, when you were in school, like may it be thesis or whatever, no? sino dito yung mga nakaranas mag correlation analysis? I'd like to know. No? Or, or hindi nyo ba siya nagawa no, when you were studying? I'd like to know no, kung, kung do you, if you have prior experience in doing this or, or wala pa. No? Okay. Were you able to run correlation when you were writing your thesis? No? Siyempre kung quantity, highly likely. No? Pero kung quality, then I doubt, no, mababang-mababa yung chance na na correlation kayo, no? Okay. Thesis po, ayan, very good, no? Kung sa thesis, kahit pa paano, sa stats, no, that's good, no? Thesis, or even senior high pa yan, di ba, that counts. Okay. Sa mga medyo, siguro nahihiya yung iba to answer, no? Kasi, alam, ba't di ko yan naranasan, no? Okay lang yan, no? Kaya nga we're having this session tonight. Okay? Sige. Simulan na natin, no? So what is correlation? Let me um, transfer yung camera ko. Yan. So when we say correlation, it's a statistical technique used to describe and measure the relationship between two or more variables. So highlight ko yung phrase na two or more variables because what I want to... <laughs> correlation. <laughs> Let me just highlight this <laughs> correlation. Po daw. No, sino y- ano yan? No, sino yan? Natawa ka dito, no? <laughs> anyway, um, so going back, no? So when we do correlation, no, tingnan natin, no? Relationship between two or more variables, no? It means, kapag magkocorrelate ka, kunyari sa word exam, sabihin sa inyo, oh, ito yung situation. Tapos, piliin nyo ano yung statistical treatment. Kung isa lang yung variable, definitely hindi yan correlation. Kasi paano magkakaroon ng relationship kung isa lang? Diba sa relationship, dapat dalawa. No? May it be stats or tunay na buhay. No? Um, sa stats, dapat dalawa or more. 
It's hard, okay? It's hard. Uh, ma- ang hirap isipin ng correlation kung isa lang yung variable. Except na lang, except if we're talking about test construction, kasi ko correlate may mga items sa isa't isa. Well, isang tabi muna natin yan for now. Okay? Ngayon, let's talk about research, not really in the context of test development. Maybe that's for next time. Sa research, kung dalawa yung variable mo, malamang sa malamang magko-correlation ka. Kung isa lang, hindi yan correlation. Maybe other treatments, but not correlation analysis. Okay? So for example, no, gusto mo malaman, no? gusto mo malaman, for example, ito yung approach sa board exam, gusto malaman ng researcher kung may relationship ba yung parenting sa dev site, yung parenting with aggression among kids. Yun bang mga parents, yun bang mga kinalakihan nila, authoritarian parenting, do they become more aggressive? So, to answer that, dalawa yung variable mo, parenting, okay, and aggression. And to determine kung may relationship sila, you run correlation. So, the word that should come into your mind when we talk about correlation is kinalaman. May kinalaman ba? And to answer that, kung may kinalaman ba, you run correlation. You correlate. You look at the relationship. So, may kinalaman ba ang happiness sa, for example, job satisfaction, yung ba mga masayang empleyado, satisfied din sila sa trabaho nila. No? So kung gusto natin malaman, kung may kinalaman, we can run correlation. So that's the first thing. Pangalawa, when we talk about correlation, it provides us two, two data or two information which are highlighted on screen. The magnitude okay, of the relationship, we also call this strength, no? and the direction of relationship. These are two important information provided by the correlation analysis. Titingnan natin yan in the next few slides. And one more reason as to why we study correlation kasi if two variables are related, it is possible that one of them may be the cause of the other, yet we do not claim cause and effect. We will go back to this later. Kung bakit, we do not claim cause and effect. Pero possible that if related sila, then possibly may cause and effect relationship sila. Pero bakit hindi natin kiniklaim yun? That's for later. For now, let's talk about, sabi ko kanina, correlation provides us to information, the strength or the magnitude and the direction of relationship. Let's start with the direction of relationship. So when we talk about direction, always remember, dalawa yan. A relationship can be positive or negative. In a positive relationship, okay, as one variable increases, the other increases as well. Kung tumataas yung isa, tataas din yung isa. As X increases, Y increases as well. That's the idea behind um, positive correlation. Also known as direct. Siguro kung um, sa board exam, gamitin yung term direct no? or sa research paper, sabihin direct. It's a positive correlation. On the other hand, in a negative correlation, baliktad. Habang tumataas yung isa, yung isang variable bumababa. So baliktad yung relationship nila. We call it inverse correlation. We don't call it indirect. Okay, we don't call it indirect. We call it inverse and yung word na negative, hindi ibig sabihin pangit. It means inverse. No? Not, hindi siya pangit na correlation. No? Just because yung pangalan niya negative. Hindi siya ganun. It means yung relationship nila, inverse. So what does that mean? Sige, balik tayo sa positive. Examples of positive relationship include, um, sige, gagawin kong board-related kasi karamihan sa inyo review is a board exam. Examples of positive relationship include, the higher the consensuousness, the higher the, the ano no, productivity. The higher the consensuousness, the higher the ano ba, no? compliance with the law. Yan. The higher the consensus, or gawin natin neuroticism, the higher the neuroticism, the higher the chances of developing kunyari, depression or anxiety. That's a positive relationship. Pag mataas yung neuroticism mo, mataas din yung chance 
na magkakaroon ka ng depression, magkakaroon ka ng anxiety. Okay? So, parehong tumataas. Whereas in a negative correlation or an, in an inverse correlation, pag mataas yung isa, bababa yung isa. For example, no? For example, the higher, okay, the higher the job satisfaction sa trabaho, the lower the intention to resign. Kasi masaya ka eh. So the more na masaya ka sa trabaho mo sa IO, no? The more na masaya ka sa trabaho mo, sabi ng IO, the lower the probability that you will resign. Okay? What else, no? The higher the neuroticism, the lower the life satisfaction. Mas neurotic ka, mas mababa yung life satisfaction mo. Kasi kapag neurotic ka, more prone ka to psychological problems. Yeah, very good, no? This is correct, no? Tama ito, no? Kapag inverse, no? As one goes up, the other goes down. Samantalang, in a positive relationship, no? The variables move in the same direction. One last example is, um, Kunyari, no? The higher your score in the entrance exam, the higher your grades are going to be in college. So, ganun siya. Okay. Ayan. Do you have questions about direction? By the way, meron pa supposedly pangatlo. No? Yung pangatlo, no relationship. So, kapag no relationship, walang kinalaman sa isa't isa. Okay? Well, hindi siya positive, hindi siya negative. Okay? Pag no relationship, walang kinalaman. For example, the relationship of English proficiency with the intention to save Mother Earth. No? Walang, parang ang, ang layo ng variables na yun sa isa't isa. Diba? So in that case, there will be no significant correlation. So that's for the direction. Okay? Ngayon, ayan, no? Nag-gets daw niya. <laughs> Salamat naman. No? Sana, sana mas mag-gets mo, pa rin, uh, mag-gets mo rin yung iba pong mga concepts na dadaan na natin, no? So that's for direction. Okay. Say it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ngayon naman, kung merong direction, the relationship also has, you know, strength. Or we also call it magnitude. Gano'ng katatag yung relationship? And the rule of thumb is, if yung correlation coefficient o yung value, yun kasi yung tawag sa stats eh, coefficient, yun yung tawag sa value. Okay? The closer it is to one, the stronger the relationship is. Mas malapit sa one, stronger yung relationship. Mas malapit sa zero, mas mahina yung relationship. Okay? Say for example, so, so ito yung, um, yung interpretation na sinusunod ko. I listed it down sa right. No? Um, so mga nagtatanong, kasi um, usually may mga nagtatanong, Sir, saan niyo po nakuha yan? Kasi sa librong binabasa ko, iba naman po yung sabi. No? Um, ako sinusunod ko yung standards sa stats tsaka sa research. Um, ito ay based kay Cohen. I'm just not sure if the Cohen I'm talking about is the same Cohen as in the textbook. No? I think ibang Cohen ito. So I have to check on that. Anyway, hindi yung identity niya yung mahalaga. No? Um, Cohen 1992, Interpretation of Correlation Coefficient. So kaya ito yung sinusunod ko kasi ito yung standard. Kung may susundin man yung mga libro, no or yung um, for example sa board exam i think they will base it on cohen 1992 so ito siya for example no kapag 0 0. 0.00 yung value ng r na makukuha natin walang relationship yung variables kapag um 0.01 to 0.09 there's a very weak positive correlation pag 0.10 to 0.29 there's a weak correlation 0.30 to 0.49 moderate positive correlation 0.50 to 0.99 is a strong positive correlation. And perfect 1 is perfect positive correlation. Hindi siya pwedeng lumagpas. If the correlation is, for example, 1.30, impossible na yun. Meaning, hindi yung ano yun, no? may mali sa computation. So that's really impossible. Ngayon, kung lalagyan natin ng negative symbol, negative sign, kapag walang negative sign, automatic positive relationship. Kapag may negative sign, yan yung negative correlation. So, it will go back to your understanding of the direction of relationship. Yan. Tama yan, Luningning, no? Um, kapag lumagpas, 
ha, yan yung sagot, no? Mali nyo, yan talaga yung choice sa board exam, no? Hire a new statistician kasi impossible yung magpas. <laughs> okay, anyway. So yan, balik tarik, lagyan nyo lang ng negative symbol. Tapos, yun, ito naman interpretation negative. Pag negative one, that's perfect negative correlation and so on. So if you always look at this, you know, um, if, if you base it on this chart, it will allow you to easily understand, okay, what kind of relationship are we see, are we observing? And this correlation coefficient automatically gives you two data. Dalawa na. Una yung number. Yung number tells you the strength. Pangalawa, the symbol tells you the direction. So this number, for example, negative 0.50, gives you two information already. That is, unang-una, since 0.50, there's a strong relationship. Pangalawa, since negative yung symbol, it's a strong negative relationship. Okay. So, bawal po ba, kunyari, lalagpas po ng 1? 1.7, kunyari. Hindi na yun tama. No? There's something wrong with the computation. It's impossible that yun yung ano, no, kakalabasan. <laughs> okay. Yan. Yan. Kay, kay Ma'am Jelay daw na alalan ni Psych Review PH. Naalala ko kasi nung 2017, yung drill book namin, si Ma'am Jelay gumawa. Tapos tawa kami ng tawa kasi nga, yun yung tamang sagot, hire a new statistician. Hang, mula nun, hindi ko na nakalimutan yung joke na yun. Okay, dati siyempre review pa ako. Ano ba? Hire a new statistician. Ngayon, gets ko na kung bakit yung sagot ay hire a new statistician. Yan. Item pala ni Ma'am Jela yun. Kaya hindi tumatak sa akin yun. Yan. May tanong kayo dito. No? Yan. Yeah, kapag, kapag yung hindi naman lahat, no? kapag natuwa lang ako sa message, yung ko nilalagay sa screen. <laughs> okay. May, do you have questions in um, about this one? So, Gagawin natin, I think mag-a-analyze tayo ng data. Okay? Tapos, na natin, no? Yung, i-interpret natin yung results. Okay, ano ba next slide to? Ayan, okay. This is just the bigger version, by the way. Okay, I'm preparing the data. Okay? Before we continue. And to visualize, by the way, because most of you would like it if we can visualize, no? Okay. Kung okay, i-visualize natin, ganito yung itsura ng perfect positive correlation. The dots are forming a straight line. And tating na nyo, kapag positive correlation, the pattern ay papunta sa upper right. Pag pa-upper right yung pataas, tas papunta sa kanan kapag positive correlation. The weaker it becomes, the more scattered okay, yung mga tundok. And the same for negative correlation. Pero sa negative, pababa siya. Papunta sa lower right instead na pataas. And the weaker it becomes, the more spread out. Okay. Ngayon, some, you know, things to clarify. Kunyari, i-compare natin yung correlation na balik tayo doon sa kanina. Kung i-compare natin yung negative 0.5 tsaka yung positive 0.5, Kunyari yung tanong, no, anong stronger? Negative 0.5 or positive 0.5? Okay. Anong isasagot nyo doon? Or same lang ba sila? Kunyari yun yung tanong, no, which is stronger? Negative 0.5 or positive 0.5? Or same lang sila? Okay. Kung alam mo, um, hindi kita ipa-flash sa screen kung natatakot ka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good, no? Kung tata ang kung usapan natin is the strength of relationship. Same lang sila. Negative 0.5 or positive 0.5. Hindi basihan ang symbol for the strength. Ang basihan ng strength is the number. So you ignore the symbol. Pero kung tatanungin kayo which is stronger? 0.10 or 0.50? Of course, what is stronger is 0.50. Okay. Even if negative pa yan, which is stronger? Negative 0.10 or negative 0.50? Stronger si negative 0.50. Because you ignore the symbol. The symbol is only for the direction. You look at the value. Kung baga sa stats, 
Okay, kumbaga sa stats. Um, ang tawag dyan, alam ko, sa math, absolute value. You ignore the symbol. Okay. Yan. Yan. Hello, Sky. No? Yan. <laughs> mga, pam- mga familiar names no, na, na naaalala ko bigla. No? Baka may iba pa sa inyo no, na uh, familiar yung names. Ha? Marirecognize ko yan. Eh. <laughs> okay. Yes, very good. Tama yan. No? Uh, the closer to zero... Yan. The closer it is to zero, the weaker it is. Yan. That's correct. Okay? Sige. Masasave naman ito after. No? Pero ang gusto ko sa live, nakakapagtanong kayo. Unlike sa recording. Yan. Okay? Sige. Okay. So, ito natapos na natin ito kanina. So, we're good with this one. Another example of perfect relationship. Okay? So, ayan. Straight line. And before our demo, okay, there are different ways to run correlation. Pero in Psych, we usually make use of Pearson R and Spearman Row. Okay. Yung Pearson R, gagamitin mo siya kapag yung data set mo, okay, either interval or ratio. Kunyari, yung mga Psych test kasi, di ba, Sabi ni Cohen, yung sa psych assessment, yung data na kukuha mo dyan is treated as interval. Kaya sa reliability, tsaka sa validity, tsaka sa test development, ang ginagamit Pearson R. Okay, gets nyo na kung ba't Pearson R lagi sa psych assessment. Kasi yung mga data yielded by psych test are treated as interval. Pero take note, ah, hindi ito yung usapan tonight, pero kasi yung sa Likert scale na 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ordinal yun. Pero kapag tinuha yung total, that's when it becomes interval. Kunyari, no, you would like to correlate MMPI with back depression inventory. Eh pareho yung interval level kasi pareho yung site test data. So gagamitan mo ng Pearson R. Yan. Okay. If in doubt... Choose Pearson R daw. <laughs> Kasi madalas sa site, Pearson R talaga ang ginagamit. Kaya malamang tama ka. <laughs> Unless na lang kung talagang sure tayo na mali yung sagot. Kasi <laughs> baka yung data ordinal. If the data is ordinal, you use Spearman row. Or Spearman's rank order correlation. And you use Spearman row when you're dealing with ranks or with ordinal. Okay. Gagamitin mo si Spearman Row kung isa sa variables mo ordinal or kung parehong ordinal. Okay? For example, correlation of your rank in RGO preboards with your rank in the board exam. So since both are rank and rank or ranking is ordinal, you use Spearman Row. Okay? So, ayan. Tonight, I will cover um, yung Kendall Stow. Okay. Um... Hindi, ang tagal ko nang, honestly, hindi ko ginagamit ito. I-double check ko lang kung, kung um, nominal ba ito or ordinal. No? Alam ko nominal ito. I-double check ko lang. Ah. Parametric. Uh, ordinal. No, ordinal siya. Sorry, hindi siya nominal. No, ordinal pala siya. You're, you're correct. No? So, ordinal siya ginagamit. Pero... Um, I'm much more familiar with Spearman and I don't usually use candles now. No? Kaya I'm not so familiar with it no? kasi hindi ko siya ginagamit. Mas, um, ano ko, no? Mas uh, comfortable ako with Spearman's role. Okay. Pero paano naman kapag parehong nominal yung i-correlate mo? Anong gagamitin mo? Kung parehong nominal naman, that's the time you use chi-square. Okay? So in other words, sir, paano malalaman ano yung appropriate treatment? Nakadepende yan anong data meron ka. Okay? Nakadepende yan kung anong data yung meron ka. So kung chi-square, nominal, kung parehong ordinal, you can use Spearman Row. Okay? Kung interval or ratio, you can use Pearson R. Okay? Ayan. Sige, I think magde-demonstration na tayo. Okay? Let me just open the data set. So that we can apply what we learned. Here's our um, problem. By the way, no, in summary, okay, when running a correlation analysis, you need to look at the following. 
Ito yung three steps recommendation ko. Three step recommendation. Una, look at the value of the R. Yan yung una. Titingnan mo yung value ng R. Later makikita natin yan. After mo makita yung value ng R, yung next na titingnan mo is the symbol or the direction of the R. And lastly, titingnan mo yung statistical significance. Sir, ano yung statistical significance? No? Um, masasabi natin significant yung correlation kapag yung p-value is less than 0.05. Pwede siya maging less than 0.01, less than 0.001, but the cutoff is 0.05. Okay. Sir, bakit titingnan yung significance? I'll explain in a while. Okay, I'll explain in a while. For now, para hindi kayo ma-overwhelm, let me do a quick demo before we, instead na mag-stick tayo sa concepts lang. In this data I prepared for you tonight, we will correlate, para, para site assessment related, no? we will correlate IQ score, okay, with college grades. Okay, so on the second column, we can see here the IQ scores of our participants. While on the third column, we can see here their college grade. Hindi pa siya na transform na one point something, no? Pang high school ko niya ring grading system. Now, on the first column, you can see here the participant number. Yan. Okay. Common question sa mga video ko, sir, saan po nakuha yung values na yan? Nagpa-test ka. Ang assumption dito na kapag pa-test ka. For example, for IT score, kunyari naggamit ka ng Ravens Progressive Matrices. Ganun mo measure yung IQ. Tapos yung college grade, eh di pwedeng tingnan mo yung grade nila sa ano, sa, sa ano yung tawag doon? TOR. Tapos ilista mo sa, sa Excel. Tapos saka mo siya i-correlate. Yan. And our hypothesis are the following. Our null hypothesis is that walang correlation. No? There's no correlation between IQ and college grade. And our alternative hypothesis is that there is a significant correlation between IQ and college grade. So, so makikita natin after the analysis, which of the two is correct? Yun bang HO or we also call it H0 or is it the H1? No, so again, no? ano sa tingin niyo, no? which of the two do you think will be, ano yung ending nito? No? Do you think it's the H0 or H1? No? What do you think? No? Anong hula ninyo? Anong kutob ninyo? Tapos tingnan natin kung tama yung kutob ninyo. No? Can you put your answers sa chat no? or sa comments pala yung tawag dito, no? live chat or comments? Okay. Do you think ang, ang ending nito totoo yung H0 or H1? Ayan, sabi nila H1 daw. Okay, sige. Yan ang kutob ng taong bayan. Okay, sige mag-analyze tayo. Um, whenever I teach stats in the university, I use Jamovi. I also use SPSS, no? pero hindi naman to stat class. No? This is an online lecture. Kaya mag-Jamovi na lang tayo. No? It's very easy to understand. No? Those who have been following my YouTube channel for quite some time know that I love Jamovi. I will just delete this. No? Nag-analyze kasi ako before, no? before we started. So from Excel, I copy the data onto, it can be SPSS or Jamovi whatsoever. Okay. So ito yung IQ nila. Kunyari ito sa participant 1, yung IQ niya 91 sa, sa Ravens, college grade niya 78. Samantalang si number 2, ito medyo matalino to, 107 IQ niya, tapos grade niya 95. Tapos, itong si number 5, ito feeling ko honor student to, no? or with highest honors, no? IQ niya 115, taas, 1 standard dev above. Okay, tapos, college grade niya 98. So in other words, tingnan natin, related ba or not? Yan. Ako gumagamit ako ng jazz. Yan. I also use jazz. No? I also like it. Yan. Pero mas fan ako ng Jamovi. Okay? Sige, mag-analyze tayo. No? To correlate, let's click on regression and let's click on correlation matrix. And and I-drag lang natin yung dalawang variable that we want to correlate sa kanan. And may iti-check. So na dito sa kaliwa, no, it, it shows. No, ano bang gusto mo? Pearson R, Spearman Rock, Kendall Stow. Okay? And here are some other options. Let me check on flag significant correlations. Okay? And I think that's it. no So sir, ano po yung flag significant correlation? Kapag chinekan mo yan, tapos may nakita kang asterisk dito sa kanan, it means... 
yung variables mo correlated. So sabi ko sa students ko, lagi niyo checkan yan. Kasi kapag na-checkan niyo yan, ibig sabihin, kahit hindi mo tingnan yung p-value, alam mo na significant sila. Okay, ay, medyo maliit pala on your end. So let me zoom in. Okay. Yan. So ito yung results natin. Okay. 0.75, may dalawang asterisk. Anong meaning yan? Kung titingin kayo sa baba, pag dalawa yung asterisk, it means significant siya at p-value less than 0.01. So anong ibig sabihin yan? Ang ibig sabihin yan, kapag less than 0.01, sure tayo up to 99% chance na correlated talaga yung IQ at college grade. Yan. Tapos, um, so what does this mean? No? Sige, interpret natin ng sabay-sabay yung results. No? Interpret natin. First, ang unang tanong ko, in terms of direction, anong relationship yung nakita natin dito sa IQ and college grade? No? Is it positive or negative? Di ba yun yung step? Step one, look at the R. Step two, look at direction. No? So ano nakita natin? No? Positive or negative? Oo, free din ang, ang Jamovi. No? Very good. No? There is a positive relationship. Kapag walang negative sign, the relationship is positive. Pangalawa, in terms of strength, ano, what can we say about the strength? No? Is it weak, moderate, or strong? Going back to the discussion earlier. So una, positive siya. Pangalawa, no? it's also... Weak, moderate, or strong, or baka naman perfect. Since 0.75 is malapit-lapit na sa 1, it's already very good. Strong relationship. So if we combine that to one sentence, there's a, there's a strong, positive relationship. This is correct. And, there is, I, and, and I promise pala ako sa hindi ko tayo papakita. So <laughs> hindi ko na lang share sa screen yung sagot mo. <laughs> anyway, so... Going back to my PowerPoint, here's the result we obtained, and here's the interpretation. There is a positive correlation between IQ and college grade. Actually, may kulang na word dyan. Alam niyo kung anong kulang. There is a significant positive correlation. Okay? So, ano ulit yung meaning ng significance? Kapag yung relationship significant, it means generalizable siya. Yung finding mo sa research mo, pwede mo siyang i-generate sa entire population. Meaning, itong, itong finding na ito is not only true for the small group of people you recruited, it's also generalizable outside your study. Ganun yung meaning ng significant. Okay, kapag significant yung correlation, what is true for the sample is true for the population. So this ito, hindi lang siya totoo about the small group who participated in the study. But we have confidence to say that our finding is also generalizable to people not involved in the study. Okay? And other than that, no other than that, no. Paano paano nasabing significant, sir? Paano nasabing significant? Una-una may dalawang star. Okay, kapag dalawang star, less than 0.01. Actually, kapag isa lang, consider na yun na significant. Eh. So, mas maganda kapag dalawa, mas lalo pang maganda kapag tatlo. Kung baga kapag tatlong star, it means, okay, sure tayo, 99.9%. Kaya napansin niyo sa mga brand, no? this can kill 99.9% of germs. Kung baga, i-relate sa stats, they're saying that significant yung ano nila, yung product nila in comparison to other products. Yan. Okay? So statistically, significant yung finding natin if we look at the p-value kasi lower siya than 0 0.05. And visually, we can say it's significant kasi there are also asterisks no? sa kanan ng 0.75. So ang yung conclusion natin, okay, very good. Kapag mas mababa, yung p-value sa alpha level, yun yung significant. Ano po ba alpha level sa psychology? 0.05. If the p-value is lower than 
you say that the relationship is significant. And again, what is significant? What is true for the sample is generalizable to the population. Okay. Kapag hindi yan significant, it means wala tayong evidence to say that they are really related. Alam niyo lagi ko nga sinasabi sa students ko na Gen Z, eto yung word na tandaan niyo whenever you hear the word significant. Tandaan niyo yung word na legit. No? Ibig sabihin, legit yung findings mo. Totoo talaga yan. <laughs> okay. Yung point 0.01 po by alpha level din. Yes. Um, sa psychology, masaya na tayo sa point 0.05. Pero sa ibang field, mas stricto sila. Siguro I'm assuming, no? Kunyara sa medicine. Kasi I think sa medicine, hindi pwedeng ano lang, 95% sure ka. Kailangan mataas yung accuracy mo doon. So I think siguro, I don't know. Tanongin niyo mga kilala niyong med student kung kapag nagre-research sila, 0.01 yung gamit. Yan. Okay. This is also correct. No, this is correct. Ayan. Pag less than 0, 0.01, we are ano no, 99% sure no, sa ating findings. Less than 0.05, mga up to 95% sure lang. Ayan. Okay. I hope nakatulong yun. No? Um, do you have questions? Mamaya may examples pa tayo, no? Pero at this point, parang gusto ko mag-move on to to um regression, okay? Pero kung may questions kayo, we can look at them one last time before we move on. Bigyan ko kayo ng mga samples, sabi sa inyo thesis mentor ako. So, yung mga students ko nagko-correlation din yung mga yon, no? One example. Ayun, meron akong students, ito yung study nila. The relationship of imposter phenomenon with parental expectations and parental criticisms. Okay. So kung makikita natin, um, so paano po ba intindihin to? Ang tawag dito correlation matrix. Kung paano intindihin to, para ka lang nagmumultiplication table. Kunyari, no? Paano malalaman kung si imposter phenomenon correlated with parental expectation? Parang, alam niyo imposter syndrome? I don't know if you're familiar with that, no? Alam niyo imposter syndrome. So tinitingnan nila, ano yung role nung pagiging strict ng parents mo sa imposter syndrome? Alam niyo anong findings nila? Okay. Dalawa yung sides ng parenting na tinitingnan nila. Expectations and criticisms. Okay. Look at this. Yung si imposter phenomenon kasi, siya si variable one. Siya si number one. Okay. If we look at this, di ba may point 0.40? Di ba may point 0.40? Yung point 0.40, okay, kung, ga, kung titignan mo siya na parang multiplication table, dyan nagtatagpo yung parental expectations tsaka yung imposter phenomenon. Okay, so meaning, the more na marami expectation yung mga magulang mo sa'yo, kunyari, o anak, mag, mag-top ka sa board exam, ha? Anak, dapat yung rating mo mataas, no? The more na nararanasan mo yung imposter syndrome. I don't know if nakaka-relate kayo. Nakakaranas na ba kayo ng imposter syndrome ngayon? Nagda-doubt na ba kayo sa sarili ninyo? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, no? The more that your parents expect something from you, the more you feel imposterism, the more that you doubt your abilities. Pero you know what's their other finding? Okay. Meron pang isa. Parental criticisms. Tapos yung correlation niya with variable 1, which is imposter phenomenon, mas mataas. 0.45. Ay, ay, teka, teka, teka. Um, mali ako nang tinignan na value kanina. Yun palang correlation ni imposter phenomenon tsaka ni parental criticism. Hindi sa 0.40, si 0.45 pala. Nakatingin ako sa pangalawa, dapat sa pangatlo. No? So yung correlation ni parental um, expectations tsaka phenomenon Ay, tama naman, no? Expectations kasi yung kanina. Expectations in imposter phenomenon, 0.40. Pero tingnan natin yung criticisms. Criticism kasi ito yung parang pinapagalitan ka na ng magulang mo. O anak, ba't mababagrade mo? Yan. O anak, ba't hindi ka perfect? No? 95 na yung score mo, ba't yung paginawang 100? Parang ganun. You know what? Mas mataas yung correlation niya with imposter phenomenon. Okay? Kasi yung, yung expectation, 0.40 lang eh. Pero kapag pinapagalitan ka, the more that you doubt yourself. Okay. 
Yan yung, yan yung sa parental um, criticisms. Okay? Other questions about correlation? Ayan, okay na daw. Sige, no? Alright, sige, sige. Ayan. Okay. So, okay. So, let me prepare my other um, PowerPoint, no? So, same yung gagamitin natin na data, no? Pero, regression naman this time. Okay. Ayan. Sige, at this point, we'll be moving on to simple linear regression analysis. Okay? And this is like an extension of correlation. So if you have correlation, meron ding regression. The difference being, correlation is only about answering the question. May kinalaman ba yung dalawang variables sa isa't isa? Kunyari, kapag bumatalino ka, are you more likely to succeed sa trabaho? Ganun sa correlation. Pero sa regression, you are now making predictions. Okay, you are now making, um, okay, meron daw bang words of wisdom for the board exam? No? Sige, mamaya, no? may mga isi-share akong words of, words of wisdom before tayo matapos. Ayan. Okay. So sa regression analysis, we use this naman when we are making predictions. Sige, let's start with simple regression um, analysis. Very good, no? The key word in regression is the word prediction. Okay. So kapag prediction ay usapan, it's no longer correlation. You are now uh, making use of regression. Okay. So what is regression? I saw it. Yeah, tama yan. Correlation is relationship. Regression is more of prediction. Okay. Sige. So what is regression analysis? No? So psychologists are interested in using regression to discover the effect of one variable on another variable. So at that point, parang correlation pa lang siya. Pero how does it differ? Kunyari, no, may epekto ba yung IQ ko dun sa grade ko sa college? Parang ganun. No? Mukha pa siyang correlation. Pero ito yung kaiba nila. Correlation analysis allows us to conclude how strongly two variables are related. Is the relationship weak or strong? Pero sa regression, regression will answer the question, how much will Y change if X changes? Kung kunyari, kung tataas ang IQ mo by 5 points, ilan yung magiging increase sa grades mo? You are now making predictions. Kung yung IQ mo is 85, paano kunyari yung IQ mo maging 90? How will that affect your grades? In business, parang ganito siya. Kung dadagdagan natin yung presyo ng piso, how will that affect the sales? Kung dadagdagan natin ng 10 piso, dadami ba yung bibili or kokonte? Okay? So, if I change one variable, how will that affect another variable? Yan yung ginagawa natin sa linear regression. So, paano natin siya i-apply sa psychology? Tatandaan, no? But in psychology, even though regression statistically is used for prediction, in psychology, hindi natin talaga masyadong ginagamit yung, reject, yung regression to predict. No? Psychologists do not usually use regression to predict. Instead, no, the results of regression will show the amount of change in Y as a result of change in X. Like what I said, Sa psychology, hindi tayo nagpe-predict dito. Unlike sa economics, unlike sa, sa business, unlike sa marketing, sila kasi mahilig sila mag-predict. Ipibibenta ko yung iPhone, kunyari, ng 60,000, ilan yung bibili? Ganon yung concern nila. Kung may kilala ka yung business major, kapatid nyo, nanay nyo, tatay nyo, ganyan nila ginagamit yung regression. Puro sila ana analysis. If ganito yung presyo, magkano yung... Ano niyan? Magkano yung magiging return of investment natin? Okay? Ngayon, sa psychology, we don't do it that way. Sa psychology, tinitingnan natin, instead of predicting, ang tinitingnan natin, gano'ng kalaki yung effect 
maliit ba or malaki yung effect? Is the effect positive or is it negative? Okay? So, moving forward, in regression, ito yung mga terms natin. The variable that is predicting the DV is called the predictor. Si predictor, siya si IV, siya si independent variable. Kaya predictor yung tawag kasi going back sa purpose ng regression, we use it for prediction. So ang tawag mo sa IV, predictor, we also call it X. While the variable being predicted is called the dependent variable or of course the DV or the criterion. In symbol, we call this the Y. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like what I said, no, after nito marerecord sa channel ko. No? So you can go back to it afterwards. Okay? Now, so yung nagpe-predict si predictor. Siya yung parang parang lang, ha? hindi ko sinasabi siya yung cause. Siya yung parang cause. While the outcome is the dependent variable or the criterion. Okay? So, babalikan natin yung same data set. Wala akong binago dyan. It's still the same data set. So, this time, titingnan natin. Okay? Kapag ba matalino ka, mas mataas yung IQ mo. Okay? Mas mataas ba yung grades mo? Very good, no? Kaya natin inaaral to. Kasi, lahat ng dinidiscuss natin will make sense kung ang usapan natin, kunyari, validity. Paano natin masasabing valid yung test? Kunya predictive validity. Di pwede natin tingnan, yun bang mga pumasa sa entrance exam, sila rin ba yung mga mataas yung GPA? By doing so, you're proving that the entrance exam is valid. That's your way of testing the predictive validity of the test. Ayan. Okay, sige, going back, no? Titingnan natin, kapag ba mas matalino ka, gaano kalaki yung effect niyan? sa grades mo. Okay? These are our hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is that IQ does not predict. Hindi na siya correlate. No? Hindi na siya correlate. Okay? We now use the term predict or not predict. Okay? IQ does not predict college grade while our alternative hypothesis is IQ predicts college grade. So ano kayang ending nito? No, which of the two will be true or will turn out to be correct at the end? Is it H0 or H1? Only, 'di ba? Only the test will tell us what the outcome will be. Pero I think may clue na kayo kasi nga significant yung correlation. So highly likely pati regression yan magsisignificant na rin. Okay? But before we analyze the data, here are the terms to remember. Okay? Ang regression, kapag gets mo na siya, madali na siyang intindihin. Eh. Pero kapag beginner ka, ma-overwhelm ka. Pero kapag gets mo na siya, ang dali na niyang itanim sa utak. Okay? Ang dali na niyang mag-gets. Okay? Okay. So ito siya. No? Ito yung mga terms. So, tandaan ninyo. Yung X is the independent variable na banggit na kanina. The Y is the dependent variable. So sa study nat or sa data natin, yung X, yung IQ. Yung Y, yung grades. Okay? Tapos sa regression, ito yung mga terms na ginagamit. If you check any psych stats book, pati sa psych assessment, okay, one of the terms we will encounter is the intercept or constant. Defined technically as the value of Y when X is 0. Pero kahit anong stat textbook basahin nyo, ito yung makikita nyo dyan. In psychology, we ignore the intercept. Wala tayong paki sa intercept sa psychology. Depende sa situation, pero most of the time, we ignore that. May mga libro nga nilalagay ng slash yung intercept. Kasi hindi mo na siya kailangan sa psychology. Pero kung, kunyari, no, kapatid mo, econ major, business major, tinitingnan nila yung, yung intercept. The value of y when x is zero. Kunyari, Ilan ang bibili ng lapis kung ito ay libre? When the price is zero, how many will buy pencils? 
ganun sila. Ganun sa economics. The more nagtataas yung presyo niya, bumababa yung bibili niyan. Parang ganun. But in psychology, we don't care about that. Hindi naman tayo business majors. Hindi naman tayo mga econ majors. Okay? In psychology, what we care about, nagigets you ba yung point? No? Do you, do, am I making sense? No? In psychology, what we care about is yung letter B. We look at the regression estimate. The regression estimate, this is what we care about. It shows how much Y will increase for every one point increase in X. Okay? So yung regression estimate, ito yung effect. Gusto natin malaman, malaki ba yung effect? Maliit ba yung effect? Wala bang effect? You look at the regression estimate. And another thing that you usually see in the textbook, pati sa psych assessment, is the R-squared. The R-squared is ilang percent ng outcome variable mo yung in-explain ng X. Yeah, so lahat yan makikita natin when we do the analysis. And here are my um, three steps in interpreting regression results. Okay, if you follow these three, hindi, iba yun, no? Iba yung, uh, ay tama yun, tama, tama ito. No? Nasa isip ko constant. No? This is correct, no? Jerusalem or Jerusalem, no? Um, hindi ko alam pa, wala iba yung pangalan mo or iisa lang yan, no? Tama yan, Jerusalem. The, the slope, is the regression estimate. Okay? I don't want to be a math nerd here, pero the more na steep yung slope, the more na malakas yung effect. Okay? Ganun siya. Yan. Pero, um, yeah, the slope is the regression estimate. Tama yun, no? Tama yan. Ah, Jerus and Alem talaga. No? Okay, sige, tawagin kitang Jerus Alem. No? <laughs> okay. Going back. So, ito yung three steps. No? Kapag mag interpret ka ng regression, ito yung titingnan mo. Una, tingnan mo yung R-squared. Okay. Gano'n kalaki ng percent ng Y in-explain ng X? Okay. How much of the Y is explained by X? Malaki ba? Maliit lang. Okay. Naalala ko lagi example ni Ma'am Mayroll dyan, no? 60% of brain development of the baby comes from the mother. O para siyang R-squared. Ilang percent ng brain development ng baby yung galing sa nanay? 60%. Parang ganun yung R-squared. Makikita natin yan later. Pangalawa, after you check the R-squared, pangalawa, by the way, kulang explanation ko. If 60% comes from the mother, the remaining 40%, hindi natin alam kung saan galing. In statistical terms, yun yung error. Okay, 60% of your outcome is explained by the predictor. While the remaining 40%, okay, hindi natin alam where it's coming from. So yun yung number one, the R-squared. Basically, the bigger the R-squared, the better. Okay? Kasi the bigger the R-squared, meaning mas napepredict ni IV si DV. Yun. Pangalawa, you look at the B, you check the B, no the regression estimate or you can also check the beta ang basa dito beta yung b na italicize yung b na greek you call it beta ang kaibahan ng b sa beta yung b raw score yung beta z score so yung tanong ko sa inyo ano diyan kaya sa tingin niyo yung mas magandang interpret most of you are reviewing for the board exam do you think it's the b or the beta you can type the word beta no, if you can find the simple beta. Which of the two do you think is mas, ano, no, mas accurate to interpret? Do you think it's the B or the beta? No? Kasi yung B raw score, yung beta, Z score yan. Okay. Ayan. We can use either. Pero mas, magand, mas accurate yung beta. And finally, number three, just like in correlation, yung last na titignan mo, is significant ba by looking at the p-value? Yan. Very good. Okay. Results na pala yung next. Sige, mag-analyze tayo. No? Here's our data set once again. So to run our regression analysis, let's click on regression. Let's click on linear regression. Paulitin ko, no? 
Ang ginawa, kinlik ko yung regression, tapos kinlik ko yung linear. Ayan. So kung correlation, correlation lang. Kung linear regression, ito yung kiklik mo. Linear regression. Okay. Tapos, yung outcome variable mo, which is yung grade, ilalagay mo siya sa dependent variable. While yung predictor mo, ilalagay mo siya sa covariate. Tapos bago mo tingnan, ano po yung B? Yung B, yun yung um, regression estimate. Uh, yun yung regression estimate. While yung magandang B, yung italicize, beta. Na beta siya. Yun yung basa doon. Greek letter yun. Tapos yun naman, standardized estimate. Okay? The, the B is regression estimate. Well, the beta, the magandang B. No, the beta is the standardized estimate. Okay. Tapos, parang mag-scroll down lang ako a bit sa left. May mga i-check lang ako, no? The F test. And para makita yung beta, i-check natin tong standardized estimate. Kasi yung nandito, raw score lang yan. Eh. Gusto natin gawing z-score. I-check natin yung standardized. Yan. Tapos ito na yung result. Diba? Nakaka-overwhelm pa siya at first. Parang, sir, no, titingnan ko dito, spit sa ulo. No, anong unahin ko dito? <laughs> anong unahin ko dito? Ang dami. Maki um, yan, makinig kayo mabuti. No? Sabihin ko sa inyo, anong unahin nyo dyan. Okay. Pero isa munang papansinin natin. Look at the R. Yung R na yan, yan yung correlation ni IQ at ni college grade. Kung mag-scroll up tayo sa taas, tingnan nyo. The R that we got kanina, is just the same as this one. Diba? Ayan, diba? Same lang sila. Ngayon, paano naman yung naging R squared? O, paano yung naging R squared? Yung 0.75, minultiply siya sa sarili niya, in-square siya. Doon siya naging R squared. Ayan. Okay. So, paano natin interpret yan? Sige, interpret na natin. Balik tayo sa PowerPoint. No? Isa-isahin natin yung himay-himayin natin na parang manok na kinakain para hindi tayo mabulunan. No? First step, tingnan natin yung R squared. 0.57. Anong meaning niyan? Anong meaning niyan? Remember the R squared by definition, the percentage of the DV explained by the IV. Ilang percent nung grade mo nung college and i-explain nung IQ mo? Okay. The interpretation is 57% oh sorry, IQ explains 57% of the variance in college grade. 57% okay, nung grade mo nung college ang ipinapaliwanag nung IQ mo. Malaki-laki yan. Okay, malaki-laki yan. 57% of your grade is explained by your IQ. The remaining 43 comes from other predictors or other factors. Ano kaya yung other factors? Pwede kung masipag ka ba, kung hindi ka ba uma-absent, kung lagi ka ba nakikinig sa teacher mo. Pero 57% of your grade is explained by your IQ. So basically, the smarter you are, the higher your grades will be. At least according to the data. Okay. And, sir, paano natin malalaman kung yung 57% na yan ay significant or not? Kung makikita nyo sa kanan, there is what we call overall model test. Yan yung nagsasabi sa atin. Indicates if the na doble, no? If the model is significant. So, if titignan natin yung p-value, di ba, maliit lang, lower than 0 0.05. Meaning, significant yung R-squared natin. Yun yung interpretation niya. Kapag nag-significant yung R-squared, pag tumingin ka sa baba dun sa model coefficients, mag-expect ka na significant din yung results. Okay? So that's for the R-squared. May tanong kayo sa R-squared or nag-gets ba yung R-squared? Na yung R -squared, no? Kung may tanong kayo, no, sabihin nyo lang along the way no, para before ako mag-move on. So yan yung R-squared. Once again, 57% of the DV is explained by the independent. Right? Ngayon, step one is the R squared. Step two, you look at the regression coefficient. 
And sabi nga natin kanina, it's better to look at. Okay. Tama yan, no? That's a good way to say it, Gerald. Tama ito. Tama ito, no? Yung F-test po ba na sinasabi nyo yung model fit? Very good. Okay. Ayoko maging technical kaya hindi ko siya ginamit. Pero very good. Siya yung model fit. Okay. So, in technical terms, kapag significant siya, meaning maganda yung statistical modeling mo. Meaning nagwo-work yung formula mo. Tama yan, no? Correct yan. I agree with that, Gerald, no? It's the model co fit coefficients. Kapag hindi nag-significant yung p-value ng r-squared mo, ang ibig lang sabihin yan, huwag ka na mag-expect na may effect yung mga variables mo. Okay? Nangyayari yun kapag sobrang baba ng r-squared. May, may research kami ngayon yung r-squared. May iya ka na lang eh. <laughs> 0 0.5, 0.07. So yung mga variables namin, walang effect. Yun yung nakita namin. Yun yung, yun yung napansin namin, nakakaiyak lang yung R-squared. No? So kapag malaki R-squared mo, it means talagang, okay, this is correct. It's the goodness of fit. Okay, it's the goodness of fit. Yan. So it's a model fit, it's the goodness of fit. Yan. Okay. Kami na to, nagagandahan kami sa R squared kapag lumalagpas na siya ng 0.10. Medyo pangit kapag sobrang liit yung mga 0.01, 0.02. Okay, medyo ano na yun, questionable na yun. Sige, step number two. You look at the, you look at the individual effects of the variable. Yung intercept, yung first column, first row pala. Okay. Yung model test, no? Yung model test, ang sinasabi sa atin nito is kung talaga bang may effect yung predictor or predictors mo kung marami. Dito, um, ibig sabihin nito, talagang yung napili mong predictor, talagang may impact siya on your outcome variable. Basically, that's what the model test is telling you. Okay. If the R squared is significant or not. Kung may effect ba talaga yung variables mo or wala. Yun yung sinasabi sa atin ang model test. Kapag yan hindi significant, tas kapag sobrang baba ng R squared, it means yung variables mo walang effect. Kunyari, no? Kunyari, yung mga mataas sentence exam, not necessarily sila yung gumagraduate ng college. Meaning, walang effect yung score mo sa entrance exam sa college success mo. Yun. Pangit yung model fit nun kapag ano, hindi siya significant. Okay. Pero sa psychology, you know what's we're inter what we're interested with? It's not really, um, it's more of the second part. Ito na yung discuss ko ngayon. Okay, yung intercept, just ignore it. <laughs> okay, we don't talk about the intercept in psychology. No? Pero in business, yes, pinag-uusapan siya. Dati may client ako, econ major, mahalaga sa kanila yung, ano, yung intercept. Kasi usapan nila pera eh. GDP, ganyan. May, yung client ko dati, yung, yung study niya, GDP. Mahalaga sa kanila yun, no Pero sa atin, iba kasi yung gamit ng psychology sa regression. Eh. It's more of gano'ng kalaki or kaliit yung effect. Ganon tayo. Ngayon, may effect ba yung IQ dun sa college grade mo? No? Yung R, ay sorry, hindi R, yung B in this table is the estimate. Yung point sixty Okay. How do we interpret that? The regression estimate tells us the amount of increase in the DV for every one point increase in the IV. So, ano ulit sir? Ibig sabihin, every time tataas yung okay, college grade, our outcome variable, increases by 0. 0.60 points every time for every one point increase in IQ. So yung 0.60 na yan, ang ibig sabihin yan, every time yung IQ ng tao tataas by one point, yung college grade niya tataas ng 0.6. So going back to correlation, anong klaseng relationship meron sila? Positive or negative? Ulitin ko ha, every time tataas yung IQ mo ng isang puntos, yung grade mo sa report card, tataas by 0.6. Kunyari, IQ 100, 
101, 102, tumataas siya. 1.1.1.1. Ako, 100 IQ ko, yung kunyari. Tapos yung kapatid ko, 105, mas mataas siya sa akin ng 5 points. E di mas matalino siya. Di ba? Ganun yung meaning nun. Kung mas matalino siya, mas mataas yung grades niya. <laughs> okay? Kasi 105 siya, ako 100 lang. Very good. There is a positive correlation between the two. Okay? Significant ba? You look at the p-value. Di ba? Lower than 0 0.05? Yes. Since napakaliit ng p-value, it is significant. Okay? Ang interpretation nito, significant yung effect ni IQ on college grade. Okay? Pero like what I said, aside from this one, aside from the B, mas pagandang tingnan yung standardized. Kasi nga, it's, it has been rescaled to Z-score. So, di ba? Mas accurate siya. Mas gusto natin Z-score. No? Sa so, psychology. Mas, um, bakit sir? Later, may example ako, mas malilinawan kayo. Mas useful siya kung marami kang variables. Kung baga, mas accurate ito. Okay. How do you interpret this? As IQ increase by one standard deviation unit, College grade increase by 0.75 standard deviation unit. Ano daw? <laughs> Anong ibig mo sabihin, sir? Hindi namin naiintindihan. E di pa simplihin natin, kung magbabasa ka ng research paper, hindi nila i-interpret yan katulad dung nasa second bullet. Although alam natin that that is the correct interpretation. Pero kung magbabasa ka ng research paper, ganito yan. IQ positively predicts college grades. Okay, anong mas maganda explanation? Yung second bullet o yung third bullet, no? Ano dito yung mas nagigets ninyo? Yung third. Kaya, kaya ito yung sinasabi ko sa students ko. Technically, tinuro ko yung pangalawa kasi that's how you interpret it. Pero, Kung mag, sa research paper, enough na yung third. Okay? So meaning, the smarter you are, the higher IQ, the higher your grades. That's the explanation for that. Ganyan sa regression. Tapos, by running some analysis, by running some computation, okay, pwede na natin i-predict. Ah, mas maganda sa, for some, yes, for some, mas natutuwa sila sa second. Kasi nga sa bell curve, no? Um, pero in research, usually, we report it like in third. Yan. Pero um, mas tama naman talaga yung second because it's um, how it's supposed to be interpreted. Okay. Alright. Sige. All in all, this is how you, ex how, this is how you report it. Okay. A simple linear regression analysis was carried out to determine if the student's IQ predict their grades in college. Results show that IQ positively predicted the student's final grades. Nilagay yung beta, nilagay yung p-value, nilagay yung r-squared, accounting for 57% of the variance. Nilagay yung model fit indices. That's how you report regression results. May demo ako after this. But for now, uh, meron ba kayong tanong? This is the part na magtatanong ako kung may questions kayo, no? Before I do um, my last demo, no? I think I prepared two. Depende kung makaya. Nang, wala naman tayong limit, no? Kung gusto nyo, gagawin natin to hanggang alas stress ng madaling araw, no? <laughs> Pero dalawa na lang yung, yung demo ko. Pero at this point, before we go to the demo, do you have... Um, Ah, okay. This is a very good question. Sa regression po ba, positive po ba lahat ng value? Kasi walang negative value. Kahit yung negative, mamaya. Tingnan natin. Meron ba? Tingnan natin na parang may makikita tayong negative mamaya. Pero, your next RPM, kapag yung estimate o yung standardized estimate, negative siya, dun siya magiging negatively predicts. Okay, doon siya magiging negatively predicts. Kapag yung estimate value 
or yung standardized estimate has a negative symbol. Kailan lang nangyayari, sir, yung negative symbol? Kapag negatively correlated sila. Kunyari, kapag mas mataas ang presyo ng gasolina, ano kaya ang apektado dyan, no? Think of a run. <laughs> okay. Uh, or what else, no? Kunyari, kapag mas mataas yung... Um, ano ba maganda example for negative, no? Okay. Titingnan ko, parang mamaya meron akong example dito na posibleng may negative. No? Pero so far kasi example ko, puro positive. Okay, puro positives. Okay? Ayan, sige. Ayun, ayun, naisip ko na, no? Kapag mas mataas yung presyo ng gasolina, mas konti ang gusto magpagasolina. Parang ganun. Parang ganun siya kapag negatively predicts. Okay? Ayan. To end the lecture part, kasi mag, magde-demo na, ay hindi, I will cover multiple regression then last demo na. Okay? Other questions? No? Yeah, pinapakita ko lang ulit yung terms. Na-discuss na siya kanina. Maybe you're wondering, sir, paano ko, di ba sabi mo originally yung regression ginagamit siya to predict? Eh, sir, paano kami magpe-predict using that? Although I really discussed this in psychology kasi nga, Um, we rarely use regression to predict. Sa business talaga, ginagamit siya. Yung econ teacher ko, pinagpe-predict kami using regression. Nung college ako, may econ subject kasi kami. Pero just in case you're curious, just in case you're curious, okay, this is the regression formula. Feel ko curious kayo dito kasi nakikita niyo to sa textbook. Kunyari ni Cohen tsaka ni Kaplan. Diba? The regression formula is equal, is y equals a plus b times x where y is the predicted value of y, the a is the constant, and tama ka, no? Sa so, tanong mo kanina, no? Jerus, no? The b is the slope or the regression coefficient, okay? And the x is the value of x. In other words, kung magpe-predict tayo, ito yung formula na gagamitin natin. Okay? Ginawa kong makulay para mas madali ninyong mahanap dun sa table sa upper right kung anong values yung gagamitin. Okay? Ngayon, mag-predict tayo. Kunyari, this is my example. What would be the predicted grade of the student kung yung IQ niya is 105? Ano? yung magiging grade niya. Ito, prediction na tayo. So kapag nag ka ng regression analysis sa SPSS or whatever, tapos nakuha mo yung mga values na to, doon ka na pwede mag-predict. Kaya bumabalik tayo sa purpose ng regression, which is prediction. Okay. What would be the grade of the student if his IQ is 105? Definitely, mataas yan kasi matalino. Hindi naman matalino, pero 105 above average above average. Okay. Bakit mas maganda gamitin si Beta? Una, standardized score siya rather than raw score. Pangalawa, no, pangalawa, um, mamaya ipapakita ko kung bakit, no. May sagot na si Gresha, no. Gresha was my student before. Hello. <laughs> okay, 90. Tingnan natin, no. So pareho ba tayo ng computation, no. Okay. Kinumpit ko siya. No? So this is how you will do it sa formula. No? Diba? A, equal, A plus B times X. The A is the constant. So this is it. 27.35. The constant or the intercept. The B is 0.6. While the X is coning given. 100, 110 or whatever. After doing some computations. Yan, tama. 90 or 90.35. Meaning, Kapag yung IQ mo 105, yung predicted grade mo magiging 90.35. And that, my dear students, is how you use regression to make predictions. O ngayon, gets you na. No? Nag-make sense na ba sa inyo? Ngayon, gets you na kung bakit kapag regression, it's ang, the word that comes into mind is prediction. Kasi gumagamit tayo ng formula to make predictions. Pero in psychology, We rarely use this formula. Depends on teacher niyo. Pero ako, we're not interested with this. 
we're interested with gaano kalaki or kaliit yung effect gaano kalaki or kaliit yung standardized estimate that's what we care about okay yan pero kung magbabasa kayo ng research from ABM yan accountancy business management econ dati nagbabasa ako ng mga research no from other fields Talagang very specific. Dati may client ako, nagpagawa siya sa akin ng regression equation. What will be the GDP of the Philippines if this is the amount of money the government will spend on the Navy, on the Army, on in the Air Force? Yun yung pinagawa niya sa akin. Okay. I don't think so. Kaya nga sabi ko hindi. Diniscuss ko lang siya para mag-gets ninyo. Mali niyo meron pero noong time ko wala naman. I don't think so. Yun yung sagot ko dyan. Okay? The reason why I discuss it, maganda na gets nyo siya in terms of concept. Kesa yung mathematical side. Yun. Okay? I think ang, ang kutob ko dyan, it's more of the concept of regression rather than the technical side of it. Hindi ko na siya malakihan, sorry, kasi naka-PowerPoint na siya. No? Yun lang, sorry. <laughs> Pero yung next, ano ko, med, yun yung mal malaki-laki. No? Ayan, last part. Sige, tapos dalawang demo. Okay? Ang kaibahan lang ng simple tsaka multiple, sa simple, isa lang yung variable na predictor mo. Isa lang yung outcome mo. Pero sa multiple, kaya siya tinawag na multiple, marami ng variables yung tinitingnan mo. Multiple linear regression is used to predict a dependent variable if one has multiple, marami, no, maraming independent variables or predictors. Tinitingnan mo, ano yung effect ng dalawang variable na to sa isang outcome variable? Hindi na isa. Kapag dalawa na siya or more, it becomes multiple. Okay? Sige. Here are some examples. O kunyari, Oh, yan, usapang board exam. Self-efficacy as predictor of board exam. Kung self-efficacy lang mismo in board exam, simple lang yun. Pero kung i-divide natin siya onto components, according to Bandura, may apat na component yan. Mastery, verbal persuasion, social modeling, physical emotional states. Makikita natin kung gano, no, or among these four, sino sa kanila, or ano sa kanila yung may pinakamalaking epekto sa board exam. O sige, no? Kunyari, no? Uh, sa tingin nyo, no, I would like to ask you, ano sa apat na to sa tingin nyo yung most likely will predict board exam success? Yan. Usapang bandura tayo ngayon. No? Si mastery ba? Si verbal? Si social modeling? Or si physical emotional states? What do you think among these four predicts no, board exam success? Very good. Si, sabi nga ni bandura, mastery. The more that you know the topic, the more na confident ka about sa inaaral mo, the more na alam mo yung inaaral mo, the more that you succeed. Yan. Ang medyo mahina, si verbal persuasion eh. Kasi what if sinasabi, o oh, kaya mo yan, tapos what if hindi ka naman nag-aaral? Di ba? Yan. Okay. Si physical emotional, yung effect niya negative. So may nagtanong nung kanina, di ba? Si ikaw ba yun your next RPM? No? Ito negative to. Kunyari nilalagnat ka. Physical state yun. Malamang, bababa board exam rating mo yan kasi nilalagnat ka. So ganito ang, ganito ang, ano no, um, multiple regression. Another example, ako kahit hindi ako IO major, natutuwa ako sa mga topic sa IO. O, the effect of the three types of commitment on job satisfaction. Di ba tatlo yan? Affective, continuous, normative. Ano dyan sa tatlo yung pe-predict ng job satisfaction? Ako sa tingin ko, affective. Mas masaya ka sa trabaho mo. Ay, sorry. Mas, mas masaya ka sa company. Mas mahal mo yung company. Mas masaya ka sa trabaho mo. Ganun siya. While the other two, I think yung continuance, negative yung effect niya. I think lang nga. I think lang. Tapos I think yung normative, medyo mahina yung effect niya. Ito, mga, binibase ko ito sa real research, no? Ayan, marami nag study na ito ng commitment na ginagamitan ng regression. What else? O, the effect of hope, self-efficacy, resilience, and optimism, or what we call heroes. 
baka itanong to sa IO, I don't know. No? When we say psychological capital sa IO, hero yan. Hope, efficacy, resilience, optimism. Okay. Um, I have a colleague right now sa university, IO, no IO, nag-conduct sila ng intervention sa isang company. Ewan ko kung tapos na or magkakandak pa lang. In-increase nila yung hope, efficacy, resilience, optimism. Tapos tinitingnan nila, anong effect nun? Okay. Ang tawag dyan, just in case lumabas siya, we call that psychological capital. In short, that's the hero ng isang empleyado. Does it affect coping? Yan. Sige. Okay? I think that's the last part sa PowerPoint ko. And now we do some demonstration. Okay. Sa demo natin, eto yung gagawin natin. I'll prepare the data. Basahin niyo yung instructions. Titignan natin no, yung child aggression. Using the child aggression data, determine how TV watching, video gaming, and poor parenting affects aggressive behavior among children. Particularly, which of the predictors have a significant effect on aggressive behavior? Pangalawa, which among the variables have the strongest effect? Ano sa tingin nyo? No? Hulaan lang natin. Ba't pa nagiging masama yung mga bata? Ba't sila nanununtok, nangangagat, nananabunot? Kakanood ba ng TV? <laughs> Kaka-computer, kaka-cellphone, video gaming? Or do you think it's parenting? Ito pwede itong dev site. No? Kung dev site major ka, pwede ito yung study mo. No? Dev site, di ba? O yan, sabi ni, ano, sabi nila, poor parenting daw. Yan, yun yung tingin nila. Or pwede naman kasi hindi lang isa, pwede silang lahat, pwede dalawa. Okay. So, ano effect nila? Yun yung titignan natin. I prepared the data set ahead of time. This is based on a real study. I forgot who the real authors were. Credits to the real authors. Uh, um, I got the data from the textbook of Andy Field. Okay? So, here's the data set. So, basically, I don't know how they did this, pero I think nag-survey sila sa mga bata. I, no, I, medyo malabo na nag-survey sila sa mga bata. I think this is observation. I think, instead na yung bata yung nagsagot, baka yung nanay yung pinagsagot nito. Hindi ko lang alam paano may measure yung poor parenting. No? Kasi, kunyari yung nanay yung nagsagot, magiging honest ba siya doon? Well, anyway, hindi yun yung problema natin. <laughs> Wag na natin problemahin yun. No? Basta nagawa nila yung study, yun yung mahalaga. Tapos ito yung mga variables natin. Television watching, computer gaming, poor parenting, our outcome is aggression. Bakit nagiging agresibo ang mga bata? Okay. Let's run at the analysis. Review, i-correlate muna natin. Correlation muna. Regression, correlation. Isa-isahin natin. Isa-isahin natin. Television and aggression. Uy, significant. The more na nanonood ka ng TV, with tatlong asterisk pa yan, ha, the more na nagiging aggressive ka. Pero yung relationship is weak. Mahina, 0.16. Compared kanina, 0.75. Yan yung una, no? Tingnan natin yung iba. Next. Computer games, aggression. Mas matinti to. 0.19. Significant ba? Yes, it is. Last one. Tapos mag-regress na tayo after. Poor parenting, aggression. Kunyari hindi marunong yung nanay magpalaki ng bata. Hindi ko na-checkan yung star. Mas matindi effect, 0.21. Dito pa lang may clues na tayo. Pero kasi hindi ito accurate dahil when you do correlation, you ignore the other variables. Sa regression kasi, you take into account yung mga variables para malaman mo sa tatlong yan, ano talaga yung may effect, ano yung wala. Okay? 
Kaya mas accurate yung regression. Because in regression, you do not ignore the other variables. You consider their effect. So let's run a regression. Okay. Our outcome variable is aggression. Our predictors are television, computer gaming, poor parenting. Scroll down sa left. Gusto ko makita yung model fit. At gusto kong makita yung standardized coefficients. And here are the results. R squared, medyo mababa. 0 0.07. 7% lang ng aggression yung ina-explain ng tatlong variables na to. Meaning, may iba pang variables that can explain aggression aside from these three. Ano kaya yun? Tulungan niyo ako mag-isip. Maybe temperament? What else? Ano, so, ano pa sa tingin nyo? Maybe modeling. Kunyari, kung may kuya sila na aggressive. Medyo mababa, no? 7% lang. No? Times 100 kasi yan, eh. 0.07, 7%. Pero still significant. Kapag nag-significant yan, at tumingin ka sa baba, dyan mo makikita kung ano sa mga variables mo yung significant or not. Kapag dito pa lang sa taas, hindi na significant, Huwag ka na mag-expect na significant sa baba. Ganon siya. Kaya mahalagang tinitingnan yung model view. Pero meron ako mas malaking version yan sa PowerPoint. Same lang pala. You know? But anyways. Okay. Isa-isa yun. Himay-himayin natin. Television. Significant or not? What do you think? Significant type SIG or not significant type NS? No. What do you, how do you understand the results based on our discussion? Ang panunood ba ng TV ay may epekto sa pagiging agresibo? No. Look at the, the p-value. What do you think? Significant or NS? Right? Okay. May mga nagsasabing significant. May mga NS. Okay. But the correct answer is NS. Kasi yung p-value mo, higher than 0 0.05. Meaning, walang kinalaman ang panonood ng TV sa aggression. E di ano yung may kinalaman, sir? Next, computer gaming. Significant or NS, computer gaming? Ito si computer games. Isa ito yung p-value niya. Ayan, tama. Significant. Kasi, less, sobrang liit nung p-value. Meaning, may effect talaga siya. Ano yung effect niya? You look at the standardized estimate. 0.14. Meaning, the more you play computer games, according to this study, the more you become aggressive. And the same can be said for poor parenting. Significant din siya. Pero among the three, siya yung may pinakamalaking standardized estimate. May tanong kanina, sir, ba't mas paganda yung standardized estimate kesa estimate? Kung babalikan natin yung basics ng psych assessment, hindi kasi lahat ng test on a scale of 1 to 5. Merong 1 to 7, merong 1 to 10, Merong 1, 2, 3, 4. Merong 1, 2, 5. Kaya natin mas sinusunod yung standardize. Kasi ginagawa niyang same yung scoring system ng lahat. Ini-standardize niya. Kung titingnan natin, tingnan niyo yung estimate. Yung, nasa, yung, eto, no, yung estimate lang. Kung ito yung basihan natin, mas malaking effect ng computer games. Eh, than poor parenting. Ang liit. Pero sa standardized estimate, which is C-score, Dito lumabas 
na mas malaking effect ng poor parenting kesa computer gaming. This is a more accurate result than the unstandardized one. Kaya ito yung tinitingnan. And between the two, poor parenting has a larger effect on aggression than computer gaming. So, to end this part, no? after nito, gusto nyo pa na isa pang sample, but to end this part, this is how you exp- how you report the this is how you make sense of the results this is for my students no i borrowed their write up for tonight's um for tonight's live stream okay yeah sabi nila mga ano ko to stat students last sem a multiple regression analysis was conducted to investigate the relationship between aggression and three standardized predictors. Bakit may standardized? Sige, i-correct natin yung result nila. No? Hindi siya, I don't think it should be three predictors. That would be enough. For parenting, computer games, and television. The predictors accounted for 7% of the variability in aggression. Tama yan, based on sa result kanina nilagay nila yung model fit. Significant yung model. It was found that poor parenting and computer games positively predicted aggression. Meanwhile, television watching, hindi naman television, ano yung TV mismo? No? <laughs> television watching naman. No? Television watching did not have a significant effect on aggression. Kasi maliit yung beta niya, pangalawa yung p-value niya, 0.212. Tama ba pagkaalala ko? 0.212 ba yon? Yes, 0.212. So napaka-liit. No? So ito yung interpretation nila. This suggests that the strongest predictors of aggression among children, kasi yung study na to may with an older sibling, eh, mga mga bunso, mga bunso or mga mga younger siblings no. The strongest predictors of aggression among children with an older sibling are parenting styles and the use of computer games. So yung may effect daw sa aggression ng bata, yung parenting tsaka yung gaming. On the other hand, time spent watching television did not have a significant effect on aggression. So that was their conclusion and I do agree with that. Based on the data, yun yung naging outcome. Okay. Yan. Yes po, isa pa daw. And after na ito, mag-words of wisdom na tayo para sa board, as you requested. Tanong, ano yung mga gusto niyo i-cover ko? Before the last example, what do you want me to cover in the next live stream? Hanap ulit ako ng another opportunity. Ano yung mga gusto niyo ano natin, no? um, i-cover natin? I-comment niyo lang. No? Titingnan ko kung kaya ng powers ko. As long as kaya ng powers ko, i-cover ko yan. No? Pero itutuloy natin yun na yung um, statistics and test development. Ipe-prepare ko lang yung ano, yung, yung ano ko doon, material ko doon. Okay. Sige, another example no? while waiting for your responses. Using the supermodels data set, Determine which factor significantly predicts a model salary. Okay? Yan. Sige. Tingnan natin to. No? Okay? So, this is another study from the textbook of Andy Field about supermodels. Yung mga catwalk models. And ano yung predictor ng salary nila? Whether malaki yung bayad sa kanila or maliit lang. And the two variables they have taken into account are years of modeling. Kompletuhin natin na years of modeling and beauty. No? How you define it traditionally, yun yun, no? the beauty of the model. And the outcome variable is their salary. What do you think of between the two will be, you know, ano kaya yung may effect sa salary? Years of modeling, beauty, or both? Ayan, parametric ng parametric. Sige, may material ako dyan, ready na actually. Ready na nga ba? Um, hindi yun ganun ka-technical, no? pero 
wala akong demo doon, wala akong demo doon. Pero dadaanan lang natin yung ibang mga iba't ibang mga treatment. Pero hindi ako magde-demo kasi baka abutin tayo ng limang oras. Pero will that help na ba? No? Okay na ba 'yon? Sabihin ko lang kailan niyo gagamitin. Pero wala mo nang demo. We can do that on a separate occasion. Okay. Ako pinlano ko na tites tapos another occasion ano ba naman. No? Pero ang gagawin ko this time, ano lang muna, ano yung pipiliin mo if this is the this is the situation. Okay? Ayan. Pero going ba, sabi na iba beauty daw, na yung may effect. Okay. Sige, i-run na natin. No? So tingnan natin, ano ba talaga? I-correlate muna natin. And para masanay kayo, lahat ng variables natin, isalpak na natin sa correlation para matuto kayo mag-interpret ng matrix. Okay. Tingnan natin yung correlation matrix. Yung correlation ng beauty ay salary, no? Salary yung variable natin. So, yung nasa pinaka-last column. Beauty and years of modeling are significantly related kasi may asterisk. 0.34. Meaning, the more that, the longer you are in your modeling career, experience, di ba? the higher your salary. Pero, si beauty, walang effect sa correlation. And somehow that tells us na sa regression, parang ganyan din yung ending. So, i-check natin. Let's do regression. Okay? Beauty and modeling, sorry, beauty and, years of modeling and beauty are the covariates. And salary is the DV. Gusto kong makita yung model test. And gusto kong makita yung model coefficients na standardized. And there you go. Isara na natin yan. Ito siya. R squared, 0.11. Okay, okay na yan. E value, less than 0.001. Significant. So meaning kapag tumingin ka sa baba, no, isa sa mga yan may effect. Okay. Just like in correlation, if you look at years of modeling, if you look at its p-value, less than 0.001, standardized estimate is positive 0.34, meaning the more that you spend years in modeling, the higher your salary is going to. Pero sa beauty, look at the p-value, 0.879. Mas mataas siya than 0.05. Meaning, wala siya talagang effect. Is it surprising? Ako na surprise ako. Okay? Maybe sa research lang na to, I don't know kung ba't ganun yung finding nila. Pero basically, this tells us that what matters more in their participants, no, in their research, is the experience of the model rather than their beauty. Nakakagulat. I don't know this is absolute I don't I don't say that this is absolutely correct at all times no maybe sa sample lang nila no I don't know if other studies would have the same finding but um, let's report the results as we end the session yeah ito sabi ng students ko based on the regression multiple regression analysis the two predictors the models beauty and years of modeling accounts for 11% of the variability in income or salary. The results indicate that the model's beauty does not have a significant impact on salary. This is the beta. 0.01 nga ba? Tama. 0.01. P is not significant. NS is not significant. This means that even if the model is considered to be more beautiful than others, it does not necessarily translate to a higher salary. However, the results also shows that years in modeling is positively associated with salary. This means that the longer a model has been in the industry, the higher their salary is likely to be. Okay. 
Yan. Kasi madalas sa kala natin, yung subjective beauty ng tao is totally the end. Alam natin, di ba, kung manunood ka ng, ng, ng ano, Miss Universe, di ba may mga races din. What is beautiful for an Asian may not be beautiful for an American, for a European, for an African. Yun, yun yung isang magandang ano doon, explanation doon. So it's not the subjective rating of the beauty of the person. Maybe that's a big factor. Do you agree with that? No, I don't know if you agree, no? Pero that's one way to look at it. Yan. Pati sa ano, di ba? Um, kunyari, may racist comment, ano ba yan? Ang, ano naman, ba't ganito yung skin color niya? O ba't ganyan yung mata? Ba't ganyan yung itsura? Ba't, ba't ganito ganyan yung shape ng katawan? Pero, magugulat ka, yan yung champion or yung Miss Universe. Diba? Yan. Alright? Sige. Questions about the regression analysis? Tama yan, no? subjective kasi ang ratings ng beauty. Yan. Questions or clarifications? Anong mas gusto niyo unahin natin next time? Is it the statistical treatment or um, statistics and test development? stat treatments. Okay. Sa hierarchical, mas advanced na yun. Sa hierarchical, iniisa-isa mo siya. May study kaming lalabas soon. Hierarchical regression. Sa multiple kasi sinalpak mo lahat. Sa hierarchical, isa-isa mo siyang i-insert. Masyado na yung advanced. Pang grad school level na yun. Okay. Residuals is error. Yan. Yung standard estimate is just like the estimate, only that it has been rescaled to. Parang ginawa siyang Z-score. Okay, parang ginawa siyang um, Z-score instead na raw score. Kaya um, mas makakapag-make ka ng comparisons between the variables. Saan po dapat mas mag-focus? Ako, oh, Cohen gamit ko. Okay, Cohen yung ginamit ko nung nag-aaral ako. Okay? Sige, may lecture ako about test development. Hanap tayo ng day, no? Medyo busy ako this week. Bukas may presentation kasi kami sa ano eh, ng research namin. Tapos, so mara- ang dami namin mga presentation, no? Ayan. Okay? Sige, no? Ayan. Um, okay, sige. Um, before we end, let me just um, invite everybody that um, if you're considering no na mag mag um, all star um, i'll be in the all star review no if you're considering joining the, the all star um, review i think makikita kita tayo sa manila branch okay um, and also sa cebu branch no so you can contact the respective branches if you would like to jo- meron pang all star sa ibang mga lugar no um, and you can contact the branches offering all star review okay Pero yeah, I think may kita ko ang mga future RPMs ng Manila branch for the All Star and also for um, also for the Cebu branch. So ayan, in advertise ko lang. So okay. Makikita-kita tayo soon again face to face. Wala po ba sa standard estimate na strength kung sino wala in unlike correlation, wala siyang strict interpretation. Ito yung small, medium, large, weak, moderate strong. Wala siyang ganun. Okay. Words of motivation daw for the board exam. Um, This is not my line. No? Nakuha, nakuha ko to kay Sir Jojo. Okay. And I remember Sir Jojo once told us, no one is 100% ready for the board exam. You just have to be ready to take it. Okay. Ako na board exam ako, ang daming reason for me to think na hindi ako papasa. Like, alam ko most of... Uh, Ang daming mga graduate this time, this batch, with Latin honors, no? Ang dami natin mga scholars, no? Mga cum laude, manya cum laude, suma cum laude. When I graduated, I was just a regular student. I did not graduate with honors. I'm like most of you, na hindi graduate with honors. 
Pero kasi, what kept me going is that I really wanted to pass. And I will, I'm willing to do everything I can do, okay, during that time for me to pass. So I was not 100% ready. Kahit malapit na board exam, I still make silly mistakes in my drills. Ang dami kong mga mali. When I had my diagnostic exam, 46 over 100 lang ako. Pero for me, no, the more mistakes I make, ibig sabihin, more room for improvement for me. So I think if I was able to do it, definitely you can do it as well. Ayan. Sige. So there you go. Sa Mindanao, I don't know kung meron na. I-check mo lang yung mga branches. O, saan ka ba ngayon? No? I don't know kung saan. No? Hindi ko memoryado kung saan yung mga may all-star na, na branches. Ayan. Okay? And remember, what predicts success in life, okay, is not the person's IQ, but rather, it's the grit, it's the academic resilience of the individual. I failed so many times as a student, I had lines of, I have mga line of sevens when I was studying. I did not graduate with honors. Pero pagdating sa review, kung yung review nag start siya ng 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock pa lang nandun ako. Nag-aaral ako, nagbabasa ako before the day starts. And when the day ends, nag-aaral pa rin ako. It's my consistency, it's my consensuousness that brought me here. So, ayun, no? If I was able to do it, Paano pa kaya kayo who graduated, di ba? With cum laude, magna cum laude, suma cum laude, no? Mas kaya, mas matatalino pa kayo sa akin, mas magagaling pa kayo sa akin because ako nga hindi ko narating yan. Di ba? So if I was able to do it, lalo na, pati yung mga usual students, mga typical students, ako nga kinaya ko. Kayo pa kaya. Di ba? Hindi ako magaling sa lahat ng, hindi ako magaling sa isang sub, wala akong isang subject. Usually, laging yung classmate ko ang tataas ng score. May mga nakaka-96 kunyari sa ABSI, nakaka-95 sa IO, ganun. Ako, wala ako isang subject na magaling ako or ako yung laging top. Wala akong ganun. Pero yung secret ko is that sa lahat ng subject, consistent ako. Okay, yun yung secret ko. I may not be the, the best, I may not be the top, the ace in a single subject, pero... Kung ano yung score ko sa isang subject, dikit-dikit siya with my score in other subjects. Kung baga, pinahalagaan ko lahat ng subjects sa board exam. That's how I was able to do it. Yan. Just trust in yourself. Remember, nando na, okay, nando na sa board exam paper yung sagot. Ahanapin mo lang siya. Yun yung tatandaan nyo. Nakasulat dun yung sagot. Kailangan nyo lang gawin hanapin. It's not an essay test. It's a multiple choice test. Of course, I'm not giving you false reassurances. But if that will help you, di ba? Yung tandaan niyo. Okay? So, there you go. Questions or clarifications? Anybody? Alam po, magkikita-kita pa tayo ulit, no? Let's plan kung kailan tayo mag, magkakaroon ng another session for the stat treatment. Ewan ko kung this week or baka next week na. And for the... Gusto ko kasi ituro yung test development. Okay, gusto ko kasi maturo yung test development kasi uh, may mga nagsabi sa akin medyo mabigat daw ang test dev sa board exam before, no? So, yeah, there you go. I think we can end with that and I'll see you around. Thank you very much for attending, okay? And enjoy the rest of the night. See you around.